everyone. Welcome to our Sunday virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're so glad that you've joined us via Facebook Live or Zoom. Let's begin our service with our opening chant, One with the One. <laughs> I live, I move, I have my being in God. I am, God is, I am one with the one. You live, you move. You have your being in God. You are God is. You are one with the one. We live, we move, we have our being in God. So now, please join me in prayer. As we turn our attention inward, knowing that truly there is only one, one life, one power, one infinite vibration of love that is God's life, God's power, God's love, in which we all reside, and that nature of God lies in each and every one of us because everything in creation is an expression of God. And so I know that God is absolutely present and unfolding through every part of our service this morning, that that vibration of love connects us. That vibration of love flows through all who are of service, through our musicians, Karen, Sam, through our soloist, Melissa, through Dean, who leads our chants. And I know that we hear the perfect word of God through our beloved Dr. Mark this morning. I absolutely know that Dr. Mark is that vessel through which we hear the message that awakens us to that essence of our being, that divine wholeness and love such that we can experience it more fully and express it more fully in our lives. And so I know great healing and revealing is unfolding in this time together. And I give thanks for that. I know that all good comes from God, and so I say thank you, God, and release this word knowing it is already so. I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still.
And now, please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, let's join in our congregational song, Joy and Peace in My Heart. Joy and peace in my heart, always I feel. Joy and peace in my mind, God within revealed. Joy and peace in my life, I am here. I am one with God, I know the truth. I am one with creation and one with you. There is no separation between all that is. Joy and peace in my life, I am here. Spirit dwells within me, guides all I do. It infuses my life with the light I am new. I am rich with abundance of all that is good. in my heart always I feel joy and peace in my mind God within revealed joy and peace in my life I am here I am So now, this is our opportunity to just get still for five minutes, to turn our attention inward, and to meditate. And so I'm going to invite you for the next five minutes to just silently repeat the phrase, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. That's our mantra for the next five minutes. Just keep repeating that silently to yourself and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
This is one of those moments when all that really matters is crystal clear. But we are woven again by whatever threads of life that has brought us here. We are stripped of all our are getting to the core Tell me something real and nothing more Cause I don't know why And I don't know how Well I So I'm here between the bookends of everything that was and what will be. Well, there's a wealth of information, not so many answers, it seems to me. So I face the Fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, good morning. Welcome. We are so glad you're here. Welcome to Virtual Church. It's good to have you with us. Uh, in the Science of Mind philosophy, we teach that God is in the eternal now, right? That your good exists in this present moment, and that our job is to claim our good you know, to say, my good is my perfect health. My good is my abundant life. My good is my right and perfect job. Emma Curtis Hopkins says, God has created good for you, and you ought to have it. So the healing principle and peace of God with, uh, is within each and every one of us right now. And so no matter what you are seeking, we believe in our philosophy that it actually exists right now. And so... If that's true, then why would we wait for a healing? Why, why would we tell ourselves we have to postpone? You know, uh, someday I will be well. Someday I'll be peaceful. Someday I'll be abundantly supplied. Someday I'll have a job I love. See, the God of health, the God of peace, the God of abundance is within each and every one of us right now. And I love that. So what you are seeking in the future is present now, right now, where you are. And your knowledge of the law of your mind is your savior. 
So I wish, I wish I always knew that there was only one power God. I wish I always knew that all of my needs would be met. I wish I always knew that real power comes from one source, and that source is God within. I wish I knew my inherent goodness. I wish I always, always knew that I was loved, loving, and lovable. How about you? <laughs> In religious science, we teach, yes, one power. Oneness, not two powers, no duality. God has no opposite. So much, most of all trouble we experience, I think, is from a belief in duality, that there is God and then there is something else. And, 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 and that implies that I am separate from God if there is, in fact, something else. So what keeps us from feeling our spiritual connection with God and other people is this belief in duality, that there is God and something else. So what keeps every area of our life from working and flowing freely is this incorrect belief, God and something else. The world around us supports the belief in duality because the world around us is always telling us that something outside of us will make us lovable, will make us okay, will make us worthwhile. Something outside of us will fulfill us. Mm. You know, it's like we're looking at a menu mm, to see what else could it be. You know, because this couldn't possibly be God, could it? It must be something else. What are my choices? Does super salad come with that? You know, could, could I have a little side dish of guilt and maybe, uh, oh yes, a nice plate of not enoughness along with that. See, in science of mind, there is no devil. There's only one power. So there can't be a devil. The Lord our God is one, what it says in the Bible. If there were two powers, now wouldn't one of them canceled out the other by now? Of course. Don't we think God would be sick of the devil by now. It's just sort of like, you need to go. You just need to go. So think about this. Whatever we have difficulty with in our life, where there's trouble, where there's lack in our lives, we're believing in two, not one. Two powers, not one power. And we believe very strongly, it seems to me, in the negative power. We give it lots and lots of attention. People can tell me in incredible detail what they don't want in their life. They can tell me in incredible detail what they're afraid of. But when it comes to what do you want, what do you want to create, how would you like to have healing in your life, they're like, eh, I just want to be happy, I just want to be happy. And you know, I'm a fan of being definite with the infinite. I think we have to give direction to the law so the law can fulfill the direction we give it. So we have to ask ourselves, wilt thou be healed? Do you want to be healed? And if you do, then pick up your bed and walk. Take responsibility. Do the spiritual work and take some action. See, that's why we love a devil in our lives. I'm convinced. We don't have to take responsibility. You know, if you have a devil, you have an out. I don't know what got into my husband. It must have been the devil. I don't know what got my kid on drugs. It must have been the devil. Remember Flip Wilson? The devil made me do it. Yes, absolutely. His character, Geraldine, the devil made me do it. So we don't have to take responsibility for acting lovelessly if the devil made us do it. You know, we don't have to take responsibility for doing our spiritual work. Oh, it was the devil. You know, devils are negative states of mind. A woman I know told me um, that she feels like a fake. A fake. And now I've heard this from several people over the years, and it seems to be kind of a common malady. It's so centered in the false belief that I am not enough. She has entertained a devil in her mind, is what she has done. She is believing that she is small, not much. She believes she's separate from God. She thinks that eventually everyone will catch on, and she will be booted out of the club because she's a fake. Now listen to how insidious that is. I am a fake. See, this is the way people talk. Our daily spiritual practice, and it is a daily practice because we're not finished yet, because the discipline is essential to changing our consciousness. That, that will lead to a different awareness if we're doing a daily spiritual practice. That will lead us to the spiritual truth that makes us free. You know, the devil is the personification of the misuse of one power. If there is a devil, and this is really bad news, if there is a devil, it's in your own mind because it is your mind turned against you, okay? So we can have devilish thoughts, all right? Thoughts that really make us feel separate from God, separate from love, separate from life. Thoughts that make us use the power of God in us against ourselves, against the stream of life, 
To let the idea that I'm a fake rattle around in consciousness and continue to seep into our subjective mind is not the work of our higher self. It's self-sabotaging. And it would certainly be convenient to blame what we and other people do on the devil, wouldn't it? Oh my God, it would just be so nice. We, that list would be endless, wouldn't it? I mean, we are talking a si much longer than my Christmas list. This is a really long list. But again, we come to there is no devil out there. This is how we account for the things in the world, in our homes, in our lives, that we just don't like. Misery, lack, stupidity, ah, it must be the devil. This is a misunderstanding of what God is. This is seeing things in the wrong light. It's just a, a form of spiritual ignorance. One of the things I wish I knew all the time was that we are here to discover and reveal the divinity that is within us. We're here to stir up the gift of God that's already been placed within our consciousness. God becomes human for the joy of expressing and discovering himself. I think about the man who worked hard in his yard every day for years, planting, weeding, cultivating, raking, watering, on and on and on. And one beautiful day, a minister walks by and says, oh, brother, God has certainly blessed you with a beautiful garden. And the man responds, indeed he has, indeed he has, preacher, but you should have seen this place before when he had it all on his own. <laughs> and that's us, right? Your fee, you, your feeling, your mood, your attitude is the connecting link between the invisible and the world of form, the visible. We've been blessed with a wonderful gift of life. So I ask us, what shall we do with it? Are we going to waste our precious time blaming a figment of our imagination, not tending to what we were given? Right? We cast out demons by affirming our unity and our oneness with God, and that is all there is. I am one with God, and that is the truth. There is no other. We are right now capable of expressing all the qualities and attributes of God. They're within us, waiting recognition. What are they? Love, peace, joy, abundance, creativity, on and on and on. Why don't we recognize them? Because we've let a little devil in, right in here. Devil comes from the Greek diabolos, and that is one who throws obstacles across our way. Wow, that's so great. I mean, I just love that definition, one who throws obstacles across. It certainly seems like there will be obstacles on the path so we may as well learn to deal with them intelligently, creatively, and spiritually. And as we do this, I believe there will ultimately be less obstacles, but until then, this is our, ex this, this is our experience. This is the work we have cut out for us, right? And what is that? Well, part of it is to remember the spiritual truth for ourselves and stay focused on that, to not be tempted off the path. So Quimby was one of the early New Thought founders, uh, he was actually thought of as the father of New Thought, and he was this great American healer. And his inner conviction was what was true of God was true of the person he was praying for, right? So for us, that conviction comes by repetition, it comes by faith, it comes by expectancy. What's true of God is true about us. It's also our work to remember and remind others, I think, of the spiritual truth about themselves. Even if we don't say it out loud, to hold in our consciousness when we see other people, when we're thinking of other people, to know that highest and best truth about them. Who we are is so much greater than any of the difficulties that we go through. So I, I love this. This comes from uh, the work of Angelus Arian. She's a cultural anthropologist. I did work with her. Uh, I did a lot of work with her uh, some years back. And in her study, she realized, uh, she found that in indigenous cultures, they will let you tell your story three times. So you can go on and on about how they did it to you. He done me wrong. She done me wrong. They took advantage of me, whatever it is. They will let you tell your story three times, and they will listen raptly with attention and compassion. But the fourth time you tell that story, they get up and walk away. That's just what they do. They just get up and walk away. It's like, okay, you've had your time to wallow in this. You've had your time to just get everything out of it. Now it's time to move on. 
So, you know, Jesus had just returned from the wilderness, and he's filled with the Holy Ghost. The wholeness of God in him was realized. And he was aware that he was one with God. God in me is wholeness, perfection, love, abundance. Right? And now he's hungry after his time in the wilderness, and the devil appears to him. You know, the misuse of one power personified, tempting him to make bread out of stone. Go ahead, make supply. You can do this. You can make it happen all by yourself. You know, feed your externals. And Jesus answered that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So then the devil shows him all the kingdoms of the world and says, all this power I will give you and the glory of them. If thou wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Worldly power, that could be very tempting, right? Come on, you want it. They will love you. If you don't know you're lovable, well, you know, actually no crowd is going to do that for you. That's just principle. And Jesus says, get thee behind me, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and only him shalt thou serve. And then the devil brings Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple and says, throw yourself off the top of the temple. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee and keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. In other words, he's saying, look, if you're so great, go ahead and try to self-destruct or destroy yourself. If you think you're one with God, nothing's going to happen. And this is about having no false gods. So Jesus, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So these are the, these are the temptations. Greed, think only of yourself. Power, control all these others. Sell yourself short, compromise yourself. Put yourself in danger by worshiping what isn't real or lasting or important. If we seek first the kingdom, and that's what we're after in Science of Mind, to seek first the kingdom, which is a state of consciousness, a state of awareness of love and connection and oneness, if we go for God first, everything else will be added. Right? We've often spoke about how we have to stop criticizing ourselves, stop putting ourselves down. Um, and so that has to be no more. Instead, this is something we do. Instead, we could say this, I praise God in the midst of me. Do that with yourself right now, where you are at home. I praise God in the midst of me. I praise God in the midst of me. See, what this does over time is this will move into your subconscious mind, and we will cease saying demeaning negative things to ourselves. The outer change that I seek, you know, uh, the, the, the outer change I seek it always conforms to the level of spirit, inner spiritual awakening that I have. So if you're after a bigger experience out in the world, we have, it doesn't it make sense? We have to have a bigger experience in spirit within ourselves, within our own consciousness. I was talking with this man the other day. He's not from church, so it's nobody you know. And he does a lot, a lot of good in the world, right? I mean, the light that he is shines really, really brightly. And as I was leaving, of course, he knew I was a minister. As I was leaving, he said to me, Reverend, please, please pray for me. Pray that my sins will be forgiven. And, and, and I was like, oh, well, I looked at him, and I just took a second, and that, in that breath, it came to me. I said, you are tenderly loved by God, and I will be with you in consciousness. Remember that. And I left. And I really believe that, that we are all, every one of us, no matter what our present difficulty, no matter what we've been through, no matter how challenged we may be, no matter if we're sick or somebody we love is preparing to leave us, we are all tenderly loved by God. We have to remember that. It's certainly something I wish I knew all the time. And my prayer for all of us is that we remember it, that we are all tenderly loved by God. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment, recognizing that right here, the place whereon we stand is holy ground. We recognize that God is here, love is here, truth is here, and that we are one with that principal power and presence. And so in this awareness of our oneness with the infinite invisible presence that we call God, I speak the word for each and every one of us that there is raising up, that there is perfect healing in our life right now 
that everything we need has already been supplied. It already exists on the unseen side of life. And as we continue to evolve our consciousness and pray and affirm, the greater good bursts forth on this earthly plane. So we include in our prayer today our family members, our friends, our parents and children, everyone we love and hold near and dear. We see them in our mind's eye and we remember that right where they are, God is fully present, that they are loved and loving and lovable, that right where they are, they stand on holy ground as well, that their needs are met and all is well in their world. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in so that from our consciousness out into the consciousness of every man, woman, and child, there is an emanation of love and healing and light and goodwill because that's all that comes from us out into the world. Our prayer is a prayer of blessing on all people. We bless our church, we bless all churches, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together. I accept for each and every one of us full and complete healing, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. I know that God within says yes to it, that we say yes to it. And so there is nothing that stands in our way. So with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks. I release this word into God's perfect law. And so it is. Together we say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful.
hearts are all in Hey, with all the possibilities Strictly statistically Someday I'm bound to win Then I live in a wonder Looking down from the top my heart wide open, no way I'm gonna stop Cause it makes me happy, expecting a lot So baby, what can I? There ain't nothing that ain't in the cards As long as my chips are all in Hey, with all the possibilities Strictly, statistically, someday Melissa Lewis, thank you so much, Melissa. You can get Melissa's music at melissalewis.net. So you can get lots more inspiration that way. Thank you to our awesome musicians, Mr. Sam Krieger and Karen Smith. As always, thank you for the beautiful musical support. Couple of announcements. So donations, if you are still needing or wanting to make a donation, please uh, know that you can call into the church office. We can take your donation over the phone uh, in the next 30 minutes after service uh, with credit or debit card. So the number is 818-762-7566. Or you can go to our website, nhcrs.org, and then forward slash give. And that takes you straight to the donation page where you can make a donation. And also, if you'd like to set up a recurring donation so you don't have to think about it every week, um, you can do that there as well. And you also have the option of texting the word GIVE to area code 818-457-3419. And of course, mailing checks into the church. But again, thank you for all the different ways that you continue to support us. Prayer with a Practitioner is available following Zoom, um, the service on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook Live right now, just switch over to Zoom. You can go to our website to get the link. And we can connect you with a practitioner for one-on-one -on -one prayer in a private breakout room. You can continue to email your prayer request to us at prayer at nhcrs.org or call the church office. And option four gets you into our ministry of prayer where you can leave a message, and uh, we check those voicemails and emails every evening and send them out to all of our practitioners. Wednesday evening service, meditation starts at 6.50 p.m., service at 7. We hope you can join us again on Facebook Live or Zoom, and my topic this week will be dealing with discomfort. Feeding the homeless. Our Love and Kindness Ministry will be feeding the homeless today. To support this ministry, just go to our website and you'll get information on ways that you can support NHCRS Spring Concert Replay. So if you missed the awesome concert, we had our spring concert with Bill A. Jones and Reverend Sidney Lehman Steen. You can still get a ticket and view it. Uh, you just need to go to our website and uh, it'll allow you to purchase the ticket and it'll give you the link to view the concert. Thank you and hope you'll enjoy it as much as we did. 
Good Friday. So can you believe this is coming up already? So uh, Friday, April 2nd. So that's a week from this coming Friday at 7 p.m. We will be having a special Good Friday service. The meditation beforehand will be at 6.50 and the service will be at 7 p.m. And we hope you can join us for that special uh, service. Our Zoom virtual patio Want to stay connected to your fellow congregants? Miss visiting on the patio here? Well, you can at least do it on Zoom 20 minutes before service or hang out with us after the service and uh, stay connected in that way. Uh, that's for both Sunday and Wednesday services. Our men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30 a.m. via Zoom. All men are welcome. And our Zoom meditation continues every Monday through Saturday, 8 to 8.15 a.m. Hope you can join us for that as well. For all that information, where do you go? NHCRS.org, yay! <laughs> <laughs> for weekly e-blasts, monthly newsletters, you could, you could sign up for those. <sighs> if, only, if only I had more fun on my job. <laughs> So thank you again for being with us this morning. Let's join in song for our closing. Repeat after me, I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My, My life, life is anchored, anchored in truth. truth. I can never be separate. I can, I can never, never be separate. separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live, I live in, in the, the consciousness, consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs>